The sharpening functions are all on the smooth and sharpen menu and there's three different groups of them. You've got sharpening and texture, standard deconvolution, and an adaptive Richardson-Lucy deconvolution. Um, they all have a min-max apply range and feather range so you can apply them to a range of luminance values and uh, the range values for this tabbed window that has the adaptive statistical unsharp and adaptive unsharp mass they all share the min-max and feather range. Now you can set these values from the histogram using the left and right or min and max uh, levels and this uh, set min max apply by picking sharpening one point gradient or the adaptive Richardson Lucy methods but a lot of times it's it's probably easier and more intuitive to set the min and max value to sharpen from the image itself now all of these commands function the same way with setting the, the, the range to sharpen, but they, they all have their own unique properties and uh, some of them sharpen one image better than, than another. Uh, the sharpening and texture enhancement, this adaptive contrast is, is very useful. Uh, the unsharp masks are old standards really and the statistical difference is yet another way of sharpening than, and it's kind of reminds me of the unsharp mass. So best thing to do is to open some images and, and try each one and get an idea of the effect that they uh, produce. But just for a de general demonstration of how uh, this sharpening works with the min-max level, uh, we're going to use uh, this Richardson Lucy. Okay, now this image of M1, some of the other videos have already stretched it and smoothed it. If I open up the process history window, I can see that it's already been smoothed uh, in this range, 0 to 29,000 on a 16-bit scale. So the background's all already been smoothed. What I want to do now is just sharpen M1 and maybe the stars a little bit. So I'm going to set the minimum value to start sharpening at here at the edge. That'll be about 16,000. And then the maximum, I'll try to pick the brightest point in M1, which is uh, something like that. I don't think I did that right. Check that and then click. Okay, about 64,000. Maybe I'll make it a little less than that. Maybe around 60,000. Then I'll set this feather range to a few thousand. The feather range will take the, the lower and upper limit and feather the data back into the unsharpened data for this amount. So anything above 59,791 up for about 1,500 will gradually be worked back into the uh, unsharpened data. Uh, I'm going to go with the 5x5. Five five. I'm just going to use a standard distribution at this point. Uh, binomial nomial is a little bit softer sharpening than Gauss. Box is pretty aggressive and it's not used much. Uh, let's try, say, 25 iterations. And I'm going to check the Reduce Artifacts box. Uh, that Reduce Artifacts box, that's on all the sharpening tools. And it... Uh, reduces or actually eliminates the dark halos around stars or other bright edges when you sharpen. Okay, that's finished. Uh, well, let's see. That's the sharpened version. If I do an undo, see if you watch up here, it'll go from sharpen to smoothing. See, it's a, a rather mild sharpening. Actually, I kind of like it. Uh, it. It tightens it up a little bit and it's not overdone. Now that's using a standard uh, distribution, either Gauss or binomial. You could pick a star and let, let's do that and compare it. I duplicated the image with this button. 
because I want to keep the first version for comparison. And I'm going to come up here and delete the sharpening. See, so now I'm back to the smooth version. And we'll close that. And to pick a star, what I need to do is come up here and do the custom point spread function. Say select from image and then come over and, and find a star and right click on the center of the star. Uh, and that put the highest value right in the center of the matrix. If you miss a little bit you can, and it's not that important I guess, you can move it around with these arrow buttons to get the, the maximum value in the center of that matrix. Okay, uncheck that. And I'm just going to use a mild uh, I mean, a little bit goes a long way here, and I'm just going to use a small point spread function. I'm going to say 5 by 5. And then I'll save that filter and close it. Now I can use it over here on custom. Um, okay, well, let's, uh, let's apply 25 in this case. Let's see what we get. See, that's a little bit stronger sharpening. 25 is probably going to be a little too much. Uh, I don't see a lot of artifacts coming, but for my taste, it looks over sharpened. Uh, so let's back that off a little. Let's get down to about, let's try 10. Now, this yellow frame, uh, that indicates that the operation is uh, a background operation or it's a threaded operation and uh, while this deconvolution is running against your image and that yellow frame appears around the image you can really come up here and do anything else that you want without interfering with this operation it's multi-threaded multi-core each thread uses all the processors uh, okay there's 10 iterations now let's kind of compare them uh, well, I don't know. It's it's purely a matter of taste, I, I guess. Uh, you could increase the iterations. You could decrease them. Uh, I guess in this point spread, custom point spread function, when I like the stars better, they're just a little tighter. Uh, and the detail in in the crab is pretty pretty much about the same, I think. Uh, so you'll have to let your taste be your guide at this point. Now, what have I forgotten? Mm, nothing, I don't think. Let's close that. Uh, yep, I think that's it.